It's 2024, and if you want to get your shit together in your business, then you need to mind the gap. Right now, you can grab an early bird bonus when you enroll in my digital bookkeeping course, Mind the Gap. Visit my link tree in the show notes to enroll, and you'll be invited to book a one-on-one virtual call with me. We're going to strategize and set you on the path for financial success in your business. This call is free for new students of Mind the Gap, and it's currently a $500 value. The course will be available starting in May 2024, but don't wait to grab your free bonus and get into our online community. Everyone who enrolls in Mind the Gap right now will receive an exclusive invitation to join our virtual community. I'm going live in there twice a month to teach you valuable financial content, answer your business questions, we're co-working together, and you'll be able to network with other entrepreneurs who are doing this work too. All of my clients are there already, and we're so excited to meet you. Visit the show notes to get enrolled in Mind the Gap today. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Money Through Ease. This is your host, Reagan. And today I've got a coach with me who does money coaching. Her name is Sarah Fins, and she's here to tell you all about keeping your business organized when it comes to the finances, talking about profit and pricing, how to price your offers for profit. And she's going to back me up on everything that I've ever said on this podcast. (laughs) Sarah, please introduce yourself to the audience and welcome. Hi. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, I love the information that you share. So I am on the same page. It's all good. (laughs) Um, So my name is Sarah Finns. Like you mentioned, I'm a finance coach. Um, I work predominantly with solopreneurs, coaches, wellness professionals, those types of individuals who are in the first few years of their business, looking to kind of get their finances in order. They know, you know, they need to do it, but they're not exactly sure how they're maybe not ready to hire it out or, you know, um, invest in software, something like that. And so that's kind of where I come in to help them get organized. Um, I am have like a lo- long kind of story. I'll give you the short version. I graduated from school um, with an accounting degree. I earned my CPA. I worked in corporate accounting for 10 ish years. And then I actually went back to school to become a health coach. Yeah. And during that time, I realized that so many of my colleagues didn't know how to manage their finances. And I was um, helping, you know, some other coaches who were friends. And I realized that it was something that I could help them organize so that they can then have the information they need to grow their business. And that's kind of when I pivoted into doing the finance coaching and help, you know, help those former colleagues and others get set up mm. with, with their money. Uh, I see in your story, a lot of my own story reflected back to me, except for the fact that like, I didn't go to school for accounting. I went to school for math and physics. And then immediately upon graduation, I was like, I want to be a bookkeeper. (laughs) Honestly, not really sure how that happened. That's just kind of what happened. Um, But I have no interest in like getting my CPA and everything. Like I'm so cool with just doing the book. So it's nice to hear that like, somebody who went to school for accounting decided to pivot, but then found themselves back in the accounting sort of field because I, and I see this too, like so many people are just unsure, um, you know, uninformed about taxes and finance and stuff. And yet they're trying to run a business. And I'm like, this is the foundation of all of it. Like, this is what we need to work on first before you even learn to sell or market yourself. (laughs) Yeah, it's so true. And I think that as solopreneurs, it's very overwhelming because we wear all the hats, right? We have to do everything from our business, Mm -hmm. you know, and if finances is something people aren't comfortable with, they're not sure how to do it, it kind of gets pushed to the bottom of the to-do list until they have to file their taxes and then you know they're scrambling to get the things they need together. And so, um, yeah, I found that that case, but it's super important when you learn to do it, especially at the beginning, because as you grow, then you've got your ducks in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I would love to know before we dive into our topic today, which is going to be really um, bringing up what to do when it comes to pricing. I think that's something so many people struggle with. Before we get into that, I'd love to hear what kind of your day to day experience is like in your business. What do you do exactly with your clients when you're coaching them? What kind of support do you provide? Yeah, sure. I'd love to share that. So I created um, a course called Easy Business Bookkeeping. And basically, it's a program that helps you organize your finances and it's um, Excel based. And the reason Mm -hmm. I created that was because like I mentioned before, I found that 
so many in their first few years of business, they're not financially ready to outsource because they don't mm -hmm. have those uh, types of funds yet. And something like QuickBooks doing it on their own is way overwhelming. It's too yeah. much. It can, it can be expensive, right? Yeah. It's really designed for people that are, are doing bookkeeping, mm -hmm. but so, you know, it's hard to kind of learn it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, I yeah, I mean, that's what I do is teach people how to use QuickBooks and it is exactly. not user-friendly. I tell them like, you're not an idiot for not understanding QuickBooks yes. online. <laughs> like, don't 100%. <laughs> I've used it in businesses that I've worked with, you know, in some, uh, some in a bookkeeping capacity, and it's not really designed just for, you mm -hmm. know, lay people to come in and use. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it's very confusing. And so the re that's the reason I designed my program, um, Excel based. And I, I set mm -hmm. it up to really just get their um, finances organized. So when a client comes to me and they're working with me in that program, they get access to the portal and, you know, all the templates, and then they can also um, invest in there. I have a self-paced option, but I have an option that it includes um, sessions with me as well, where I'll actually walk them through how to do it for their business, you know, how to yeah. set everything up, answer questions. So mm -hmm. that's my main, uh, the main way I work with clients. I also mm -hmm. do one-on-one um, -on -one coaching where if someone just wants to talk through, like, this is what my business looks like. How do I set up my processes to keep track of my finances, et cetera, you yeah. know, because I find that people have questions, but they often don't have someone to ask. Yeah. Right. It, or, or they, maybe they feel silly, like asking their tax accountant or yeah. whatever and something like that. And I don't do taxes, so I'm not, you know, just a little disclaimer that I can't really give yeah. tax guidance, but mm -hmm. I can help, um, help them streamline <clears throat> that process and give them some tips to get started. So, and that also involves, like you said, pricing, we're going to talk about that today, but like, if they're not sure how to price their products, you know, all those types of things I help guide them in that way. Yeah. And uh, something you said, like they don't feel comfortable. They don't know who to ask. They don't um, feel comfortable asking their tax preparers. Cause I find that a lot of people's relationship with their tax preparer is so disjointed or detached. It's like yes. they see them once a year. Some people don't even see them. They email their reports and they get a tax return emailed back to them. And it's not even a face-to-face -face conversation. And so they don't even know that they can't ask questions. And if it's during tax time, like we're recording this on April 5th, it is down mm -hmm. to the wire um, tax filing season for people that do taxes, not us. Cause we're... <laughs> Right. We decided, no, <laughs> we're not doing that. It is down to the wire for those people. And so answering questions with their tax clients is like, it can feel very rushed. And that's not because they don't want you to know. It's just because of the nature of the work that they do, that they really don't have time to sit down and talk to their clients about like what it all means, explaining their return to them. And I find that too, that people are just like, I just, I need to know, like, can I do this or not? And like, what should I be looking for? And they don't know who to talk to or who to ask or even what questions to ask. And that is why, you know, services like yours that you provide, and it's so valuable to business owners who are just lost in the sea of taxes and finances and need to know somebody that they trust and can go to and not feel ignorant or, you know, right. condescended to. And it's like, exactly. you're not an accountant, you're not a tax preparer. Of course you don't know any of this, you don't know what these words mean. Of course you don't. That doesn't mean that you're not smart or that you're not capable or that you shouldn't be in business. Like that is the experience that most people who run businesses that I see. Yeah, so. I agree with you 100%, 100%. Yeah. So um, thanks for sharing that. And I appreciate that like you take it from that angle as well of like helping be that guide or that trusted advisor for folks um, to really understand what's going on in their business finances. And let's get started with our topic, um, pricing 101, the art of pricing your offers for profit. I have told folks, um, this is like my trick for <laughs> pricing. First of all, I believe that it doesn't fucking matter what number you pick. Like as long as you can sell it, you feel confident selling it and that people want to pay you that amount of money, then that's the price. Like, what are you, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I agree with you 100%. It's, it's like a, an art, right? Because it's a mm -hmm. little bit of energetics. It's a little bit of how you feel about it. It's a little mm -hmm. bit about what the market wants. And I think you have to look at kind of all those things together mm -hmm. and also like where, where you live, who you're serving. So if you're local, yeah. you know, in a small town and you only serve local people versus if you're online and you're working with people all over, you know, your prices can be a bit higher. So yeah. I think it makes sense to look at kind of all those factors and the one thing I like to recommend is to just start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Start with something that feels doable to you. Mm -hmm. And then you can increase it incrementally from there, right? Because 
like you were saying, you want to make yeah. sure it's something you feel like you can sell, right? So if it's a number that feels way too high to you, even though you have a coach that might be saying price at this or price yeah. at that, or you have a colleague who's has a program at that price, it might not be the right price for you, at least not at first. And so I recommend picking one that feels good to start with mm -hmm. if you're launching a new program or, or whatnot, mm -hmm. and then kind of incrementally increasing it from there as you get more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know. think that people um, should start there with a price that they feel comfortable selling and then like grandfather those folks into that price and have like kind of legendary legend um, pricing structure? Mm -hmm. And then like, if you do raise your prices, um, what do you think about raising the prices for the folks that came on with you at the lower price versus right. like keeping them at the lower price and only accepting new clients at this offer level? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I think it depends on, you know, I guess what you're offering, right? And how often people renew. So like in my program, if someone comes in and they pay, pay the price, that's it. Once they're in, mm -hmm. they're in. Mm -hmm. So I would never go back and upcharge them because there's, you yeah. know, that, that's what it is. But if you have some sort of say coaching relationship mm -hmm. and there's a fixed term where, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, it ends at a certain time, you get to decide, right? You can say, I want yeah. to keep this client grandfathered in. And I think that's great because I think it goes um, really far in like just the customer experience, mm -hmm. right? So if you say to them, look, I'm raising my prices, but if you renew now, I'm going to grandfather you in for the next year or whatever your, your package length is yeah. um, at the same price. Um, and then yes, when you put it out there to new people, wherever your marketing materials are and whatnot, um, you can put your new price. What I also like to do um, and recommend is if you're thinking about raising your price and you say you have an email list, right. To your, to mm -hmm. your people send an email saying, I'm going to raise my price on this date. Um, if you're interested in purchasing, you have until this date to purchase at yeah. the original price. That can be a really good way to get those people that have been thinking about investing to, yeah. you know, make the purchase. And then, um, in the future, you know, you can, then you can raise the price up. Yeah. And I recently did something <clears throat> like this with one of my offers for the trainings on QuickBooks Online, which I haven't built the way I do in terms of like, how long am I spending one-on-one -on -one with the client? What do they get outside of that meeting with me? Um, you know, and I built more value into the offer, but I, it was still at the old price. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to raise the price on this because I have added value. And mm -hmm. the longer I do this work, the more value my services contain because I have that level of experience to draw on. I've just worked with more people. So I just, I have more data to pull from in terms of mm -hmm. like, what are the best practices? And so when I was considering what I would raise the price to, I thought about like, how much time am I spending on it and what my hourly rate, what I want it to be. And mm -hmm. then like, what are the other things that are not necessarily me spending time with that particular client, but I've done the work here to create something that is added onto this offer. I have like a workbook that I send to people. I have a video recording that I send to them. You know, they get unlimited email support um, outside of just the two hours of training that we do. And so I raise the price based on the value that I like just organically uh, have by being in business for how long I've been in yeah. and, um, the other things that I've added to that offer over time. And I did the thing where I was like, all right, this is going to be the date that after this date, if you book, it will be the higher price. And I had many people come in and, you know, take the bait. Like that's mm -hmm. a weird phrase. I don't really want to use that, but like I had a lot of people opt into that because they were like, oh, I'm getting a ton more value and I can like lock it in at the lower price. Right. And so that was very effective for me. What would you like thinking about, okay, if I'm going to raise my offer price or I'm going to raise my price in general, or just like starting from square one and having an offer that you're like, what am I going to ask people to pay me for this? Mm -hmm. What goes into considering that number? Like how much time you're spending on it with each client, how much time you spent in development, what your level of experience is, what do we have to consider when we're thinking about what number we're going to? Yes. <laughs> I, I think you need to consider all of those things. Yeah. So first of all, you know, figuring out how much time you're spending 
Um, and like you said, you know, something that you said, what's the hourly amount, what's the hourly rate that I want to be making, mm -hmm. right? So that's a good mm -hmm. thing to think of. Not that you're necessarily going to charge by the hour. In fact, I, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend yeah. doing a package, like you said, because you can add, mm -hmm. you know, add value and build things in. Um, but looking at how much time you've either spent creating it or spend during the program. Um, and then also, you know, how much time you spent on other things. Mm -hmm. I like to suggest, you know, not, I don't want to say copying your peers, but just looking in the market and seeing mm. approximately what people are selling similar services mm -hmm. for, just so that you can get some sort of an idea of what the market will, um, yeah. will pay for it. Mm -hmm. So I like to look at that too. Um, and again, you know, how you feel you want to, um, or what you feel comfortable making, but also something, an exercise that can be really helpful um, and that my clients really like to do is think about how much money you want to make right in a year mm -hmm. and then work backwards and figure out how many of these would I need to sell yeah. in order to reach that you know goal and yeah. if it's not if it's not going to get you there you have a few choices you can either mm -hmm. price it higher you can add a different offer maybe you want to vary it maybe you want to take more clients whatever it happens to be but that's a good way to see if I sold X amount at this price that I'm thinking about, what would happen at the end of the year? Would I make my revenue goals? So I like to kind of look at all of that and tap in and kind of get a feeling as for like what feels like the right place to start. That's really good because it, there is so much that goes into it. it. I think maybe for people, it is not knowing where to start. Maybe it mm -hmm. is like, there is so much I have to consider and I want to meet my goals. And if I'm selling a $10 uh, <laughs> class or workbook or something, right. like, is that going to get me to a hundred K that would require <laughs> a lot of people buying a workbook. Right. A lot of sales. <laughs> and, and if I don't have that audience, like maybe that's not really feasible. So I wonder, do you often find that clients like get stuck in that, like not procrastination, but just like that mental block of like, yeah. I don't even know where to start. Um, so I don't know, just pick a number and then yeah, deal with it later. Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's what I recommend too, just going with something because you can always change it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of having our own businesses is we can always change it. And if you think, you know, oh, I've got to put something out here at this price. And mm -hmm. then if I decide to change it in a month, that will look so bad. But mm -hmm. honestly, people usually aren't paying as much attention as we think yeah. they are yeah. you know, to what <laughs> yes. we're doing. And so, I mean, 100%. it just is what it is, right? Yeah. So, you know, people won't notice. Um, and also too, I noticed, I actually noticed you did this with the course that you recently did, but mm -hmm. having some type of a beta price, right? Mm -hmm. If it's a new program for you and you mm -hmm. put it out there and you can say, um, this is a, a test run, this is going to be the beta price. After this, it's going to go up. Then yeah. you have a way of, feeling out that price or mm -hmm. testing the product or whatever the reason is to do that. And then you can add, like you said, more value to it. Once you run through it once, you can see yeah. what can I add so that I feel good about bringing the price up and, and what were questions people had and all those sorts yeah. of things. So that's a, another great approach, I think. Yeah, that thanks for validating <laughs> that yeah. for me. Um, because it is all a big experiment. Like, yes, I do believe the course that I've created like has this level of value and, uh, you know, just the way that I've structured it, like the fact that people can pay once in its lifetime, like your course, like, like mine, I'm mm -hmm. not going to like upcharge you at any point. Like you paid and now you're in here. Welcome. Yep. You're here. Um, like that's how I want it to be. And I did want feedback and like for people to be part of the development of it too, because mm -hmm. I can think like, oh, this is amazing. And this is uh, what everybody needs. And it's the best thing that you need to have uh, access to if you want to start a business. And then that could not be people's experience of it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they're like, actually, I really need to know about this thing over here. Um, and I've completely left that out. So <laughs> like pricing, for instance, I don't think I've I haven't put anything about pricing in the course. So um, it's just like, if you already have a price for your offers, we can talk about like setting your goals with those offers. Like you said, right. like working backwards from like an annual revenue goal with the offers that you have. But um, yeah, like if I am offering beta testing and allowing people to step in and be, you know, like a developer kind of, mm -hmm. of the material, um, for a much lower price, like they still are paying for value. Like there's still a lot of value packed into it, but they also get to influence like what, um, 
gets included. Like, and I yeah. want it to be useful for people. So, you know, that's, that's a great, thank you for validating that that was a good strategy. And a good yeah, <laughs> no, I think it's great. And I did that with my program as well. When I first came out with it, well, first of all, I was offering it. Um, and this is something that I recommend too, is like testing your your offer. Um, yeah. I developed it and before I made it fancy and put it in the dashboard and did all the things and recorded the videos, I just put everything in Dropbox and mm. I offered it beta at a very, you know, low cost. Yeah. And I had people come in and help me make sure, you know, it, cause it's a spreadsheet, right? I wanted to make sure it was working properly. Yeah. People tested it. People gave me feedback. And then once I was ready to build it out and give it more value and take those things into consideration, I was able to increase the price, you know, as I went mm. along. Um, but it's super helpful to just put it out there. And I felt the same way, like, what am I going to offer this at? Let me just pick something I feel comfortable yeah. with and let's see how it goes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What do you do whenever um, someone is sitting down and like playing with numbers? Do you do any sort of like um, somatic coaching or body work? Because if we have a number that is like, oh, I feel very uncomfortable even saying that out loud to people. Yeah. How am I going to sell that? Do you work with clients on that level of like, eh, like yeah. nervous system, like freaking out? <laughs> yeah, I mean, not in terms necessarily of nervous system, but I do mm. have some exercises that I like to recommend. They go through really to bring out kind of our, you know, we all have these unconscious beliefs about money, mm -hmm. right? So to help kind of bring them to the surface because awareness is, the first step, right? I have yeah. a lot of people that are like, I'm not a numbers person. I'm not good in math. I can't do this. And I've and heard so, all of these. <laughs> right. And so well, I'm sure you have, right? Do yeah. you just work with people. But one of the exercises that I love is to just jot down all the memories you mm. have of money. They could mm -hmm. be totally random. Like one from my life is that I have this memory of we didn't go out to eat very often when I was growing up, but my mm -hmm. sister and my father and I had gone out or um, to celebrate something, I don't know. And when the bill came, he went like this, like he was so <laughs> surprised. Like he made, uh -huh. for those listening, he like made this like look like he, and yeah. that, what he meant it as a joke, but right, oh, that yeah. stuck with me. And uh -huh. were you younger, like a I child? Would, yeah, I was like eight, maybe something like yeah. that. And you, you know? maybe and don't realize that it's a joke at yes. first and your childhood is like, oh my God, we're going to die. <laughs> right, or like, you know, it's normal to be surprised by the bill when it comes, you know, something yeah. like that, you know, things like that. And so just by uncovering those things, I find that mm -hmm. it helps my clients to say, oh, maybe that's why I think this way, mm -hmm. you know, but also to, you know, to your other point. So I have something within my program and that I recommend for my clients that aren't in the program too, is to create a monthly money date where you go through your finances on a, mm -hmm. you know, at least a monthly basis, put everything in your tracking tool and whatever. But in doing that to make it a really comfortable experience. So maybe yeah. you have a cup of tea, maybe you play yeah. some music, maybe you sit in your bed with your laptop instead of at your desk, you know, whatever yeah. makes it feel less scary mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of more doable. So that's how I try yeah. to help my clients around those, those emotional blocks. Totally. I, this reminded me of an experience. I was on a training with a client yesterday and they were telling me like, that since our last training, which I think was a couple of months ago, um, they haven't touched it. They didn't even log into their QuickBooks. Like they have not mm -hmm. looked at it. They've been avoiding it actively. And they've the entire time been thinking like I'm avoiding this, like they were mm -hmm. conscious of it, um, but they just couldn't get past that like block. And I'm like, okay, well, let's explore like what you would need to have in your environment to feel comfortable or to like stop the avoidance or can we like I'm a big fan of like task chaining which is something I do inadvertently and I hate that like I get extremely sidetracked if I'm trying to do like you know pick up this room I end up like doing laundry over here and the dishes and um like if I am somebody who task chains or like links up different chores and stuff like is there some way that I can make sure that I chain doing the books or just looking at my financials or plugging in numbers into the spreadsheet? How often do I need to do that? What else do I do on that regular basis? Um, at the beginning of the month, I do flea meds and I change our air filter. And those are my like two chained tasks. That's like in the first five days of the month, that's how I know that I definitely did the flea meds is because I also changed right. the filter. And I did that right. last night. And like, is, I was asking this client, like, is there a way that we can, um, like, do you want to have like a whole day 
once a month. That's like the whole theme of the day is money. And um, do you need to have like a 10 minute dance party? Do you need to put on your noise canceling headphones and play the Beyonce album? <laughs> like, um, do you need to have like snacks? Do you want to order tacos to be delivered? Like yeah. what do you, what is going to help you be like excited about it? The other day I was doing my taxes and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go pick some fucking tacos before I sit down to do these taxes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's whatever gets you through, right? Whatever makes it feel doable for you. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So um, you're, I think that's what you were saying that like, if you need to sit in bed with your laptop versus at your desk or like go to a coffee shop, if you need yeah. to have like the body doubling experience of like other people in the room, if you're working from right. home all the time and nobody can see you, can you get on zoom with a friend? And that makes certain that you're going to be sitting in front of your computer and like not getting distracted and scrolling or like mm -hmm. go live. I, I have a friend that goes live on Facebook when she's like painting and yeah. uh, that's to like engage with followers, but like you can't use your phone while you're live. So you're not going to get distracted by sitting there and like scrolling. Um, so finding ways to chain tasks and to like habit stack. I want to suggest that to everybody that like, if you avoid the work and procrastinate on it, like let's hack it. Okay. Yes. Like your brain already does it. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. The, like the, the task chaining, that's something that's new to me. I love that idea. When I've yeah. like, I've like shit on myself for a long time about that. Like, man, I can't just focus on cleaning one room. I end up like organizing the closet in this other room. Like how did I even get in there? I don't know. It's like but that once, meme where it's like, I saw this and then I did that. And then I, I mean, we can all relate yeah. to that, right? I or like I can. <laughs> the person sitting with like a Mardi Gras mask on and they're like sitting in their bed, like reading a book. And it's like when you clean your room and you found something really cool that you forgot about. <laughs> and now you're just like doing something completely different. I'm like, oh, if my brain is doing that, then can I work with that somehow? Right. Like, can I hack into that? And that's what works best is the uh, the flea meds for the pets and the air filter mm -hmm. because that's, okay, that needs to be done every month. Let's mm -hmm. just say first of the month I'm doing it. Um, I set up a reminder on my phone, but knowing or seeing like the dogs still have this many flea med doses. That means I haven't given them their flea meds. I look at the mm -hmm. air filter. Oh, I didn't change it since last month. So yeah. I know that like both of those tasks haven't been done because if I did one, I would have done the other. So right. like- let's hack our, our brains y'all. <laughs> let's work. Yeah. With so, it. <laughs> right. So maybe you tie your money date in with something else that you need to do, you know, that's business related, but maybe not necessarily finance related that you do at the same time interval and mm -hmm. you can connect those things together and, and make yeah. sure you've done it. Maybe and I like. realized that like, you've called it a money date that makes it sound very romantic and pleasant and like fun and something to look forward to. And I just tell people, read your reports once a month. <laughs> and they're like, okay, so like maybe I could take a softer approach to that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I found that it, it takes a little bit of the like, stress away from it because it's a little bit more fun. And the reason I designed it in my program, it's light like you candle. mentioned, <laughs> yes, light a candle, but it's on zoom and uh -huh. there's no, you know, there's no teaching involved in that point. I mean, they can ask questions if they, one comes up, mm. but it's really just that accountability of like, Oh, mm. I have this twice a month. There's, I have yeah. two slots a month that people usually come to one or the other, but anyway, yeah. um, I'm there. They don't have to RCP. <laughs> they just show up, you know, if they want to, and they mark it in their calendar. And that's my favorite part um, because we get to see each other too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that. I, so much of what you're saying is reflecting back and validating like what I've been doing. So <laughs> I appreciate that if nothing else. Yeah. Um, what are your best tips for, um, maximizing profit when it comes to pricing? Like besides just like, how much do I want to make per hour? What other value is built into this? how much of like considering our business's overhead and, yeah. um, you know, any direct costs related to the offer. Like if you have to have a subscription to like Dropbox, like you were saying, in order to provide this offer, um, do we need to consider that? Like how much, how do we figure out profit for a certain offer? How can we maximize that with, while still staying in the range of like a price that we're comfortable selling? What are your like tips for that? Yeah, that's great. I think, um, like I mentioned, you know, I keep saying it's like an art, right? Mm -hmm. So the exercise <laughs> that I mentioned before, we're working backwards to figure out how mm -hmm. much you want to make. A big part of that is looking at your costs, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're tracking your finances that you have that information at your fingertips, but if you don't, you want to look at 
what you're spending every month, you know, mm-hmm. what you're spending every year and making sure that you have all your costs accounted for, especially the fixed ones, you know, the ones that you know, you're going to pay regardless. Um, and that's how much, you know, you need to cover to make your business break even. So, you know, you yeah. have to charge at least whatever it, whatever will get you to cover that. And then of course you want to pay yourself and you want to, yeah. you know, you don't want to just be breaking even. You want to have room yeah. for some investing, but that might mm-hmm. not come right away. Right. Mm-hmm. I work with solopreneurs who are, are like just starting and oftentimes mm-hmm. in the first few years of our businesses, we're not making a ton of money. Right. And mm-hmm. so maybe we're not um, having a lot extra left over at the end of the day and that's okay. Um, mm-hmm. But to know that, and then to price your um, offers accordingly so that you can make sure you at least cover the basics. I think is a good way to look at it too. Um, otherwise you're not right. You're not making profit. So you yeah. have to kind of crunch the numbers a little to see that, I think. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I was just thinking that like, we've talked more about what to do on the front end of like coming up with the price for an offer. Is there anything that you like to focus on when we're like looking back? Like if we are looking mm-hmm. at last year, 2023's financials, and considering maybe raising the price for a current offer or yeah. something, what do we, what do we look for to know that like this was priced appropriately or like maybe I actually lost money like selling this particular yes. thing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this comes back to, you know, what you talked about as well, like the importance of tracking your numbers. So you can look back and you can see not only what does my tax return look like, but what's yeah. happening on a monthly basis. How much am I selling? That way you can see if there are certain months where maybe um, sales are higher Um, I know a lot of times in coaching practices, there'll be a launch, right? You'll have a Mm. launch. So what months are your, are your launches and how much did those make um, compared to what, you know, the months where you didn't, is there a program you can create to kind of fill in the gap? Mm. So maybe you have some, you know, you have a program, but then you have some one-on-one coaching you use during those down months. So looking back at the profitability and the sales in your prior months and prior years could help yeah. you then decide how to plan that out in the future. And if you need to raise your prices and by how yeah. much, cause you can look at your past profitability. Totally. And I'm so glad you brought up the launching thing because um, especially when it comes to strictly online businesses and not just coaching, but like, I mean, I'm, I'm a virtual bookkeeping firm. Like I don't have an office space. I meet with everybody online right. and um, you know, a lot of the online business structures nowadays do have like a launch um, system or they don't necessarily yet have an evergreen offer, which is something Mm -hmm. that is like consistently being sold. Mm -hmm. Um, And you may have more sales for whatever reason during different times of the year, but it is so important to look at those numbers after the fact at a like monthly interval or a quarterly Mm -hmm. interval and seeing like, do I have like a feast and failing thing kind of going on? Mm-hmm. How is that like showing up and affecting the rest of my life? I know last year when I was like bare, like scraping by, mm-hmm. <laughs> which was my first full calendar year of business. Like that is totally normal. Totally it didn't normal. feel great, but it right. was normal. Like that mm-hmm. is not extraordinary at all. Mm-hmm. And I just remember getting to this point in like October and I was like, I cannot have these like hills and valleys yet like maybe mm-hmm. if i had enough of a savings or like a cushion or something mm-hmm. i would be more comfortable but like just having those peaks of like really good time well now that peak all that revenue i just made is going to the credit card bill that didn't get paid last month mm-hmm. like i don't want to live like that anymore at this point if it gets to the point where i have like a cushion or i'm in s corp and i'm on a salary basis like and the business can you know, handle the peaks and valleys that comes with time. So in the beginning, it is very important to look at that monthly comparison and just seeing like, right. What are like the trends that happen? It's different for every Mm -hmm. industry. It's different for every business. Like I've got a client that um, does like outdoor services, like residential, like cleaning services for outdoor. So like the winter, not a lot of that going mm-hmm. on. Nobody wants, nobody needs, you know, <laughs> like yeah. their windows washed in the winter. They wait till spring to get that done. And so like that's bumping right now, but he does um, 
holiday light installation during the winter. Okay. So that like sustains him. Right. You know, right. that's an offer that's like during this part of the year, a ton of people are going to be looking for that. It's not something that people want the rest of the year necessarily. So mm -hmm. knowing that information is like so valuable and being able to look back at what are my different offers? What happens throughout the year? Can right. I see trends? Can I like plan for that? Or do I want to change it completely? Be like, I don't like this. <laughs> don't right. want to do this and anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's all great. And then another thing too is like I, reflecting back after the launch too, like right away mm -hmm. even and mm -hmm. saying, you know, in this can go beyond the finances, but like what worked, what didn't work, what are, what should I do differently next time, you know, to try to keep increasing, you know, the revenue as it goes along rather than yeah. also waiting until, you know, the following year or whatever it happens to be, depending like yeah. you said on your business, but um, celebrating those wins to help keep yes. you motivated too. Yeah. It's not our like socialization and our culture has not taught us how to do that. It has mm -hmm. to be an intentional practice to sit down and say, all right, I need to acknowledge what actually worked yes. and like pat myself on the back, give myself the credit and the kudos for that. Um, Cause otherwise all we do is focus on the negative. What didn't work? What didn't right. happen? That's not useful. I mean, it is right. useful, but like, it's just as useful to acknowledge what did work. Yes. And, and also to repeat to it. celebrate um, the, like say your lunch didn't yield exactly what you wanted to, but you did have X number of clients. Like that's a huge win. Yeah. So instead of beating yourself up for what you didn't achieve, but what about what you did, especially in the first few years as you're growing your business? Like it's so important yeah. to help, um, you know, <laughs> celebrate the stuff that's going right. Like you said. Yeah. It's, it's all a science experiment that has been the theme for yeah. every guest that I've had the last couple of months. It's like, um, you got to kind of be okay with collecting the data and seeing what's working, what's not working. So tell us about, um, your offers. I know that you've got the course and we've got, um, a free, uh, offer that you wanted to talk about as well, that maybe listeners will find valuable. Yeah, sure. So I created a guide um, called Three Simple Steps to Get Your Business Finances Organized Today right away. So I share in there three tips that you can use to get started, you know, without <laughs> investing in a course and all of that. So to, to get that, you can go to my website, sarahfins.com forward slash steps um, and download that guide and that will help get you started. And like you said, um, there's my course and there's the one-on-one -on -one coaching that I do. So those are my two main offers. But yeah, I would love to Amazing. connect and, and help um, help people get started if they're feeling stuck. Thanks um, for being here. Thanks for sharing your story. Is there anything else you'd like listeners to know? Where can we go find you and follow you and be in your orbit? Yeah, well, what I would like them to know, first of all, like one takeaway is that you can do it. Like mm -hmm. you said, you know, it's not something you're born knowing unless mm -hmm. you're trained and in accounting or you're trained yeah. in bookkeeping and you're not going to know. So you can do it. Take the steps yeah. you need to learn what you need to know. So that's what I want to, you know, leave your listeners with. Um, but I would love to connect. I'm on Instagram at easy business bookkeeping, and you can find me on LinkedIn or Facebook under Sarah Fins um, and on my website, sarahfins.com. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for sharing your expertise and talking about pricing with me because it is sorely needed. The conversation about pricing uh, folks need to know what to do, what to look for and how to, how to get to that point where we've got the sweet spot of like meeting the market's needs at the price that they want to pay and also creating a sustainable business for you. So I really appreciate you sharing all of that with us and make sure that folks go listen to, uh, or not listen, go follow Sarah, go visit her website, get her tips on getting things organized. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Money Through Ease. If you found value in today's discussion, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a rating and review. Your feedback really does mean a lot to me. And if you're ready to take the first step towards organized finances, be sure to download my free receipt organization guide, Chaos to Calm. Visit the link in the show notes to grab your free copy now. Remember, your financial journey starts with small steps. I'm here to support you every step of the way. Until next time, this is Reagan Bashara from Money Through Ease. Stay empowered.